Hello, my friends, and welcome to Fishtory. I'm Alexander Williamson, and today we are going to talk about something that happens all the time. It's something that people write me about just about once a week, and that is you go into your favorite aquarium store and you're looking for the perfect new fish, and you decide you're going to get a live bear, something that has lots of little babies really quickly that's really beautiful. Maybe you're going to sell them for profit. Maybe you're just going to raise them and you're going to create your own twist or combination of traits. You want to give it a long flailing fin and maybe right now it has dual sword fins or whatever it may be. So you look at the guppies and the platies and the mollies, the sword tails and the endlers and you find the perfect fish. However, this perfect fish is a male, and you look around the tank and you realize all of these perfect fish are males. There are no females to be found. So what should you do? Oftentimes, the store has no control over what they're getting, male versus female, and believe it or not, oftentimes breeders know that they have such a beautiful fish and they don't want anyone else making a line that is that beautiful or creating competition for them. But I have a solution for you and a trick that you can get around that with if you're patient and you have the right fish in conjunction with your perfect fish. So let's talk about it right now. How you can make a female that is compatible with that beautiful, perfect male live bear that you have and how you can get them to have babies that look just like the father, no matter what fish it is. So let's say you're at the aquarium store and you found the ideal fish. Here it is. It is a beautiful beautiful little guppy and it has all the colors of the rainbow it has long fins and it has a big flouncy tail that we call the delta tail and it also has a long dorsal fin or that top fin it even has a cool pattern that we call the snake skin or lace pattern sometimes we call it mosaic but Regardless, you can see that this fish was domesticated, but it came from a long line of mutations that had to become dominant in order to exist in this fish. Believe it or not, this is the most colorful Liberty Molly from the wild. Right here with the red and orange, the autumn colors, right there. That is a male, and that is the only fin style they come in, yet... Within a few generations and crosses with other closely related live bearers, we were able to turn a fish like this into fish like these. These sword tails, uh, oftentimes sword tails, mollies, platies, uh, and guppies are different hybrid combinations. But moreover, I want you to see, look at that intense color. It went from just being in the top dorsal fin and maybe the caudal fin or the tail fin to the entire body and having different patterns and different intensities of color. So let me show you one more set of wild live bearers. Here is another set of mollies that you can see and these are a high fin molly. So people have taken that fish and they have crossed these large finned mollies with bigger bodies and in this case a yellow color and they've crossed those with those little autumn colored mollies that we saw these liberty mollies that are completely wild in order to get all new shapes and colors and over time more and more weird traits start showing up Thanks to these weird traits, we end up with fish like these, the glass belly guppy. Now, this is pretty much your standard wild guppy as far as looks go. Maybe its tail's a little bigger, but it has a important gene that is cueing its body not to produce certain pigments and certain different materials that are normally in guppies. So it allows it to be not just devoid of pigment, or albino as we would know it, 
but even rarer, it's a mutation that lets you see right through the entire fish. It lets you see the veins and the heart and the liver and the kidneys and even the fry growing inside of a female. Now this is a male right here and so he even has a little bit of color. But you'll see even in these young females you can make out their eggs, you can make out what they ate recently, and as their eggs develop you'll see little baby fish all packed into their belly right before they give birth. In fact those mutations are easily tracked luckily and thanks to a monk that was living in Austria in the mid 1800s named Gregory Mendel we can use something called a Punnett square and actually figure out the probabilities that we would end up with a fish like this when we know what traits they start with or what they look like when none of those crazy genes are turned on like the rainbow gene or the big tail gene versus when we compare with what they look like after those mutations have been selected for. And some mutations like the glass belly mutation are so super rare that it's very hard to select for them. They kind of come up once in a lifetime or once in millions of fish and that's what makes them special. The color pink is something that's actually a combination of very strange situations occurring with codominance, dominance, and partial dominance. We won't get into that in this video. This is the fish. This is the perfect fish that we have been searching for. Now, let's first take stock in what makes this fish special. So first of all, you're going to say, well, the colors. And that is probably the biggest factor in what will attract you to the fish. Whether it's all one color that's very vivid, or whether it's a rainbow of colors like this rainbow snakeskin Dumbo ear mosaic guppy. Now, this guppy has a tail that is also very unique. Beyond all that, it also has a metallic look or a almost iridescent look to it that changes color. And that's also unique and tied into the body color overall or the pigment. Beyond all this, we can also see that it has big, big fins. That dorsal fin on the back is absolutely huge and the fins up front are considered Dumbo ear fins and they're considered a long fin gene also. Now if we look at just a standard guppy, just a plain old guppy that has all recessive traits, you'll notice that they don't have those super long front Dumbo fins and they don't have a giant tail. Some of these have a fair sized tail and the shape that that fish has, but none of them have a crazy long tail. This specific strain of guppy you're looking at right now is actually the magic to how we are going to create our own version of that guppy when we need a female. It may not look anything like this male over in our tank right now, but soon we will have offspring that look very, very similar. In fact, right here is the third generation. So now you're getting a hint at what I'm going to be telling you about when you see the third generation offspring swimming by. So we know we want more of this fish. For now, let's forget the fins and the pattern. So we have to go and we have to get a blank slate, a fish with all recessive genes. And so we go and we get what we call blonde guppies or blank guppies. Now these guppies, they have some iridophores, they have a little bit of pigment, but it's all turned way, 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 way down. They're really a clear fish, not quite as clear as those uh, freakish glass fish, the glass belly fish we saw, but they're still very, very plain. And these wouldn't occur in the wild. These have been selected for and bred. These are a domestic line that is plain as can be so that they can be used for things like this experiment. So then we take the father that we know we want babies that look like him and we want a female that looks like him and we take him and we put him in a tank of only females from this group and that gives us a chance that the babies will be all showing his dominant traits since they're all recessive and he's likely all dominant rather than dominant and recessive uh, just because of how the genetics work out. 
they're going to express themselves fully. And what does that look like? Well, it looks a little something like this because you get a chance for some red and orange like in the tail of this fish. You do see that even that long fin already is coming into play. That big tail fin is even starting to express, but up here we're getting blue and green. So we don't know what's in its genetic past that's showing up. Here you can see more of that orange and red in the tail. And while these are still young, you can see some have a snakeskin pattern or tiger pattern kind of showing, and some are more plain, like the mothers. So, then we take this generation and we cross it back again after we collect them out of the tank, not with others of their generation, not with these other little guys, but we cross them back to dad. So all the females get to cross again with the one with the most traits we want. And that ends up looking not like these. So some of these are females, like that one there and that one there, and they're still blonde. But look at the females in the next generation. Here you can see no gonopodium. If you guys need to learn how to tell male from female, uh, pause the screen right here and there'll be a little guide. Uh, but here is what we are looking for. And this is the first little young male that actually looks like his grandpa. Well, actually it's his dad, but it's also his great grandpa. So this guy here, who's getting up there to two years old, He's had quite a few offspring. Hopefully he'll stick around at least one more year because we need all the females that were born at the same time as this guy, which are currently in this aquarium. See, here's one of those females and here's another one and he needs to then spawn with them. Now, hopefully what that will do is that will add that color and the reds and the metallic and the, the iridescent shimmer, all of that, it will add that like we saw it get added here and then as we saw that the females and males actually got kind of a gray or rainbow colored pattern, hopefully it will become more and more solid because this may be what the co-dominant pattern looks like when you get a recessive and a dominant sharing. And here you can see a yellow and green version. Uh, and here you see the red, black, and orange version. So this could be what we see like one quarter of the time, or it could be that we only see the other pattern one quarter of the time. Only time will tell, and then we'll know for sure which genes are dominant. And we can actually look at our chart and write down which ones express themselves each of the generations. So we've got the father original, or the F1, the F2, F3, and F4 in here, and hopefully soon, the females will be old enough to cross with this male one more time. Now, what's interesting is some of these females have that long fin on the top, like this one here, and others don't. So it may be that the fins are independent of the color and the pattern. So even once you get the color and the pattern, then it may mean that you need to go out and find a blonde or blank style <laughs> fish like these, or like a glass belly, uh, or just look at any that have all the recessive genes you care about, and look for the ones that have large pectoral fins and or the flouncy tail and that high fin up top. If you can't do that, hopefully you can keep these past generations in another aquarium and you know right here, this is when they last had that, that, that expression, at least showing up in the actual fish. So you can go back, even if you're working on generation, say, seven over here, you can go back to generation one as long as he's alive, or if you keep spawning him with the original females in one tank, you can draw from their tank, cross it with step one to the third step, and then you're taking the third step and the colors from the first step, crossing it again and seeing what you get. If that gives you all the fins you wanted and the color, then you can cross it with step six or seven. And, you know, five or six crosses down the line, you'll end up with the fish you want. Now, this is not a quick little project. This is something that takes time and dedication and is a lot more complicated than I've simplified it to sound today. But if you understand the basics of this, I think you'll understand the basics of why you can hunt down a dream fish in a live bear group. So whether it's a swordtail, a molly, a platy, a guppy, an endler, and even without the female, even if the farmers want to keep it a secret how they're making it, you can bring these traits forward one at a time. But sometimes it's two steps forward, three steps back. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode and is enjoy the content on this channel as a whole. 
I would absolutely love it if you guys liked it, gave it a thumbs up, subscribed. A lot of you haven't yet, but for those of you who have and who have become members, thank you so much. I couldn't be doing all this without you. So thank you for your time. I hope you learned a little bit, and I will see you guys on the next episode of Fishery. Have a great day. Bye-bye.